Uh, got uh, six for lifers in here tonight. I think one of those is me, though, so I don't know if that counts. But in any case, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to be going over Fans Toys' newest release. This is their uh, uh, Masterpiece Jazz, their FT48 Jive. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, really quickly, again, I'm still a little under the weather, so forgive me if I cough in your ear. But here we, here we are with the box. Looks great, as usual. Pretty standard stuff. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Great artwork by Iwanez again. Um, pretty standard stuff up here. They do have their own set of instructions. Um, so check out their channel if you have any issues with the instructions that I have. And um, on the box, we get some uh, product images. So you can see here, we have him both with his wings out or his wings tucked in. I actually have a poll in the live chat right now uh, if you prefer your jazz with wings out or without wings. So go ahead and answer that while we go through the review. And that's really it. Um, he does look quite nice. So let's get him out of his styrofoam casing. So he does come with the traditional instructions and stack card. Hey, Jermaine, how's it going? Hey, Eddie, Toy Dojo. Um, Antoine, Darkman FL, uh, Anthony Brown, Evil Ash. So yeah, he has his traditional instructions, his stack card, as you can see here, nice plastic stack card. The bio does look correct, so that's good. His instructions here, um, they're okay. Uh, the problem is there are some complicated areas and some weird um, smaller details that they don't show. Uh, which make it a little bit difficult. Even their uh, video instructions kind of skip some of the smaller details. Um, so we'll go through that. I'll try my best to try to make it as easy as possible for you guys. Um, but while he's not the easiest, he's not also not the hardest to transform. <clears throat> so a styrofoam box, FT48, right there. I'm going to throw this yeah, off to the side. He comes mostly in robot mode. He has a bunch of accessories, so he has his two speakers. We'll get those out of the bags. They can mount in both robot mode and alt mode. Uh, we have two sets of alternate faces, so three, three in total. Come on. He has his um, grappling hook type thingy with chain or cable which you can attach in robot mode. And he has two sets of guns. So one is his shoulder cannon, which is kind of toy accurate. And then um, his blaster itself. <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, hey, Ghost Rider. Yeah, he sold that everywhere. Yeah, Toy Dojo just said that uh, he they should have more available. Uh, I know the site does show out of stock, but I'm pretty sure, um, like uh, Eddie said, Toy Dojo said they do have some more. So just keep an eye out on Saturday. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Winston. Hey, Eric. Uh, hey, Alex. All right. So let's let's do what we have to do, as always, with Fans Toys figures. They come mostly um, put together, but they're usually something that you need to do. Um, surprisingly, though, not as much as what they show in their video instructions. So um, their unboxing instructions uh, talked about a bunch of things you needed to do, like flip the arms around. Uh, tab these in, um, do things on the backpack. The only thing on mine that I needed to do was uh, tab in these shoulders with this backpack. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see here. So I'm going to open this up. You can move the wings out of the way. And then in here, you're most likely going to need a spudger. But actually, maybe it's easiest. Uh, yeah, it's so hard to see. That, like right here, you see this little edge of a white piece right in here. You need to move that out, it rotates out. And what it does is it essentially just locks in the shoulder uh, a bit more, because if you try to rotate the arm, uh, you might untap it like that. Uh, so that was my, the first instinct that I had when I was trying to articulate it and I didn't uh, set everything up correctly. Yeah, so make sure that you rotate this out. It goes out like kind of like 45 degrees, it's at an angle, but it's really hard to get to, so it's super annoying. So you can see here now it's out. So you want to tab in the shoulder at the top here and at the this back angle. All right. 
And that gives the arm joint some additional stability that allows you to not um, get the shoulder disconnected when you're trying to articulate, articulate it. But again, it's really kind of annoying to access. There we go. Now we'll close this up, fold this down, and then tab in the chest again if it came undone. Uh, the other things that they mentioned were like I think the the arms might have been rotated the wrong way. Again, if you if you see that, that's very obvious. The other thing is um, this front toe and this heel. <clears throat> Again, you might need a spudger for this. This is really kind of difficult. Mine was already tabbed in, but if it wasn't, you it, it might be flipped up like this. Just flip it open, and then just tab it into the heel, like so. Um, I, I, uh, they also did something with the head. There was nothing wrong with my head. There is some way that you can you need to transform it. But in any case, um, this is what he should look like overall. Uh, just make sure you have those things. Uh, oh, sorry. And the last thing is the most important thing is that his knees are not or thighs are not locked into place. You can see there's kind of a gap there. Um, so what you want to do is come to the back, and it's kind of weird. You basically want to stabilize it. Put your finger back here, and then just push it forward and then it'll flush out here. So you can do it the other way too. I'll put I'll show it from the front so you can see it. I'll put my finger here. But you do need to get a good amount of a good amount of leverage. Don't try to do it with by moving the lower leg. You really do need to support it back here. And I believe that's die cast. So yeah, now with that, he should be mostly in robot mode. Um, again, if there are small things, some small differences in how yours were packaged compared to mine, uh, you'll probably have to take a look at those instructions for, for more details. But most important is the, the shoulder piece and then the knees. Uh, let's do a quick 360 of him. He looks really, really good. As you can tell, he looks um, really nice, shiny. As with uh, most recent Fans Toys uh, figures, he is uh, basically fully uh, painted, which is great. The paint quality is really nice. Uh, I've transformed them numerous times and haven't had any issues with um, with any uh, paint chips or as, as far as I can tell. But yeah, he looks really, really nice. Uh, he does have a bit of a backpack here, uh, more than I would like, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and the QC sticker, obviously. I kept that on just for the review. We'll take that off now. So mine was QC Inspector number 30. So good job. Mine didn't have any issues. Uh, let's take a quick look at some of the accessories. He does have his shoulder cannon here. Hey, Scott, how's it going? Uh, he is, I think, 160 or something like that. <clears throat> so we're going to tab this in. This can go onto either shoulder, but you can see there's kind of these slots here uh, for some tabs. Come on. Honestly, they're kind of annoying to get get in, but you can tab that in to get the shoulder look. And it does have one ratchet click. It's kind of interesting that they ratcheted it. Um, I would have liked some rotation because it gets really close to his head. Similarly, you can do with either the shoulder cannons. Um, you can actually, they're on a ball peg, so you can have them flared out a bit more. Or you can have them angled. But they use the same mounting points. I'm only going to mount one because you kind of get the idea. These are in like a metallic blue, backing chrome blue, which looks quite nice. His gun here um, is pretty standard. doesn't transform or anything like that. Just one molded piece. It, it does look painted. And it has a um, tab that goes into the heel of the hand. Uh, some of their other figures have been doing this. I actually think it's fine. I think this actually works quite well. So you kind of put it in like that and then push it from the bottom. And then get his fingers wrapped around. So there you go there. Um, and then lastly, his grappling hook, which is uh, with a thread here. And you can stretch it out. It gets pretty long, but it gets really annoying to kind of wrap up. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to extend it fully out. But you can see it has two sets of tabs. There's longer ones at the top and shorter ones at the bottom. All you have to do with this is transform the fist into kind of robot mode. Just open up the bottom panel of the forearm, close that up, and the longer tab should be going to the top, like so. 
Um, yeah, so that's all the accessories he has. Based, oh, sorry, I didn't do the faces, obviously. So let's do the faces, and then I'll also show off what he looks like. Well, let me do the wings first. So I asked whether he liked, you guys like the wings or not. Uh, let's go ahead and move these off to the side. So for the wings, um, one thing they didn't, don't really talk about is the fact that, come on, is for the wings, you just open, yeah, you got to get this out of the way. Open this up. Rotate these out to the side. And then you want to make sure that your wings, uh, these uh, pins here, they're on a, a small telescoping joint. You want to make sure that these are extended. You can see there's a small gap where my fingernail is going in right now or where this uh, spudger is fitting in. There should be a gap here before you start rotating. So you can rotate it and then telescope it closed. And then the pin will, have, uh, will, will uh, sink inwards. And you want to do that, that locks it in place. I, I don't really like that they did that though because then you can only have it at a specific angle without it being really loose. But in, a, in any case, um, you can have the wings out and the shoulder cannons. T-Man requested that I show this wings out with the shoulder cannon to really give it the toy look. He does look really good. So yeah, there you go. All right, uh, Kiki Wings. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, again, it's not how it's supposed to be designed. You really, it does lock into place. Yeah, so it has to be, yeah, so Toy Dojo has, so it has to be an angle. Yeah, so there are uh, tabs on this rotational joint that when you telescope it and push the pin inwards, um, it locks into place. So now it's secure, so you can't rotate it. All right, so let me just take a quick look at the, the faces. So he comes stock with kind of a straight face, as you can see here. And then he has... My my uh, Jazz is always pretty happy since he's been a kind of happy-go-lucky bot. So that one here. And then he has kind of a concerned, slightly open mouth one. So yeah. Uh, to switch the faces, it is quite easy. You just lift up on his entire chin and you can see it it hinges there and then it's just pegged in so just pull it downward it is kind of an awkward position but then you just peg it back in up here <clears throat> he does have slots on either side of his face that correspond to tabs in there so make sure the, the face is straight and then when you close it that those uh, slots sit properly and then we have the happy jazz or jive sorry jive so yeah that's really it for um all those accessories let's go through articulation very quickly uh, articulation wise let's start with the head so his head is on a swivel and then on a hinge that can look up almost all the way uh down not really uh, you saw before his head is on a neck panel. This is for transformation, but if you kind of want to use it, I guess you can. It just, it's not really for that. It doesn't look right. His shoulders are ratcheted, and they're die cast. You can see uh, die cast pieces there. You can see him go out to the side like so. Bicep swivel that goes all the way around. Single jointed elbow that goes uh, more than 90 degrees, which is good enough. Wrist swivel. Masterpiece carbot style hands, except that he had, does have a separate finger joint, uh, for a, a pointer finger, but they're all curled and only one uh, pin at the base of the fingers. So you can't do any pointing action. Uh, waist wise, uh, oh, so if you get the wings uh, out of the way, you can close up the backpack a little bit more, but you do need to have a little bit of space here to um, make use of his waist joint. So his waist can go 360, and he actually does have an ab crunch, which is nice. So you can see here, well, oops. We can untab his waist joint. He goes about 45 degrees, maybe a little bit less. But it's nice that he does have it. It makes him look way more dynamic. Hip skirts, pretty standard. Forward, back, and to the side. Ratcheted waists. Our hips, 
which feel very nice. Again, die cast. You can see the die cast metal here. Uh, friction joint going out to the side. His thighs, I believe, are die cast. Yeah, I believe those are all die cast as well as this um, knee piece that we've adjusted before. So he does have a decent amount of die cast. His foot is die cast. Let's see what else is die cast. I think that's it. Besides some inner workings, he has some inner working pieces that are die cast. Um, let's see, where were we? Oh, thigh swivel, hidden thigh swivel, which I love. I love those. He does have ratcheted knees that go pretty far, like so. They feel really nice. All his joints seem very tightly, uh, nicely tolerant, which is great. His foot does have ankle tilt, so you can get it pretty, pretty, if you, especially if you untab the heel, you can get it, um, tilted in quite a bit, but don't twist it too much while it's tabbed in, or you might damage uh, your tab here. And then, uh, if you don't have this tabbed in again, you can get a little bit of, a little bit more toe articulation. You can get a little bit up when it's tabbed in, a little bit down. But um, if you untab this, you get a little bit more. Did I miss anything? Oh, the wings. We already talked about the wings, and and that's really about it. I don't think I'm missing anything else. But overall, he looks really great. Uh, let's do some weight measurements because I know people like to know. He does feel, again, quite nice. Um, out of box, he did feel very hefty, especially for the size. Uh, so he is 8.1 ounces or 230 grams. Uh, in comparison to, uh, this is the premium version of Make Toys Downbeat, who is 198 grams, so about 32 grams lighter, or he's 32 grams heavier or about seven ounces. So there you go in terms of weight. While we have downbeat out, it makes sense for us to do a comparison. So again, this is the premium version that came out, was a reissue that came out later. You can see them side, side by side. Um, Jive is slightly taller. <clears throat> Let's bring out MP44. Hey, Dare, how's it going? Sorry, I'm, I'm missing a bunch of comments. Wow, we jumped up to 50-some-odd people. Crimson, uh, Scott Gomez. Hey, TM. Uh, TM Reviews also put out his review earlier today, so make sure to check his out. I'm sure he probably has um, overall the same kind of opinion, but I'm sure he probably did things a little bit differently, and who knows, maybe he even has um, some really good tips that I might miss. So, Ghost Rider, G. Tony. Uh, hey, Princeton, how's it going, too? Thanks for always making it. McLuiter, G, uh, Robo Lucas, Clinical. So hopefully I got most of you all. So here, here are some comparisons. Uh, the other figure that I'll do a comparison with is um, MMC's or Ocular Max's Navigant, just because I did a review on him. And he's a newly released figure. So you can see how they scale. Uh, I guess I should have brought out, like, Phantasm or something like that. Um, I just didn't feel like getting him out of my case just because of where he's positioned. Um, but I think you guys get a, a, a good idea. If you guys really want side-by-side uh, -side with Phantasm, I'm guessing um, TM Reviews probably did. I haven't chance, had a chance, but I bet you he did. Um, but if you want to take a look, um, you can always donate $1.99 in the chat, and I'll, I'll make sure to do it at the end of the review. So, yeah, let's get these. Oh, I'll do a little bit more detailed uh, side by side just with this guy because I know this is going to be the option that I think most people are going to compare him with. I do think he looks, uh, Downbeat looks a little bit cleaner overall. Especially the backpack area is way more secure. Like this one just kind of has floats on a hinge here. But overall finish and feel, uh, I would give the edge to Face Toys Jive. All right. <clears throat> okay. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into transformation. Uh, the transformation, uh, I know some people have been saying, um, or I've read, and some people said in my Discord that uh, they they heard that this guy was fast, easy, and fun. I, I definitely would not put him at, at that level. Um, I think he's probably better than average transformation for a fan's toys figure, but I wouldn't say he's an enjoyable transformation overall. There are some... A lot of really just annoying nitpicky things about it and some like tolerances, collisions and stuff like that, clearance issues that I find just not really enjoyable, uh, both on the legs and on the upper body. So we're going to go uh, and we're probably most likely going to um, 
go the same way as the instructions. We're going to start with the legs first instead of the upper body. I actually tried doing the upper body first, um, but there are a couple things that you actually need to do on the lower body first uh, or else you can't get anything kind of situated correctly. So we're going to start with the legs. First thing we need to do is come down here. We'll go ahead and angle this. Oh, no, sorry. That's a lie. We want to get this foot tab out first. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies. <clears throat> but yeah, this these tabs are pretty stiff, so fold those into the foot, open up the heels, and then you want to angle the heel inwards, kind of like an ankle tilt. From here, you're going to want to come in and pull down on the leg. The reason you tilt this is just really to get a little bit of um, um, space for the wheel to come out. And then you want to pull forward on this whole section as well. So you can do that kind of at the same time. Uh, I always forget this piece, so I'm going to do it now. Uh, there's a little gap filler piece. Fold that in. <clears throat> and then um, contrary to some of the instructions, uh, I actually like rotating this piece right away. So this whole side panel is on a rotational bit. Um, it's kind of annoying, to be perfectly honest. Um, and the clearance, no matter which way you rotate it and whatever you do, you do have to do a little bit of stretching. Um, so I like rotating it now. Oh, sorry. No, that's a lie. No, I think I'm... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so just rotate that around like so. And then we can bring this down, tuck that in like that. Like that. We're going to open up the wheel well. We're going to straighten out this wheel like this, then push it through, and then fold it flat. you got to have to do it that way to make it clear, easiest, because these rubber tires end up having some minor collisions here. Um, once you clear that, you can go ahead and tab all of the wheel well pieces together. And then you want to, this is a telescoping piece, so this telescope's out. You want to rotate it 180, and then you telescope it closed. It has a series of tabs or, or pegs here. Rotate that down. All right. Uh, next up, we want to close up the toe. So flip the toe all the way up. And then we're going to rotate in this section here. Once you have that, you can close this back up. And then this whole heel section... You need to rotate this bumper piece down. That will give you enough space so now that this little piece here has that peg hole and, a, and the peg on the inside. So you kind of want to guide that in, tab that in, and then this section here with the wheel well will kind of all lock into place. You're probably going to, that's probably going to come loose later. Um, don't worry about it too much. But come to the bottom here and then fold up that heel and that will tab into the top of the toe. Lastly, the spoiler, you're going to rotate it back on this double hinge and tab it in down here. All right. Um, now we're going to have to unlock the knee. So dip, uh, like we did before, is if in the opposite direction, we're just going to push on that knee piece. Um, one area that I don't think they call out in any of the instructions that I've seen is that this, this also, this leg is on a telescoping joint. So you want to open this up. So don't forget to do this. You want to open this up and then, uh, let's see here. Well, let's get, let's get the other leg done as well. And then we'll, I'll show you how it's all done. So we'll just leave this here like this for now. Well, no, let's just keep going. So flip up this back hip skirt all the way. And then this center hip skirt lifts up and then un untabs the hips. We're going to rotate it like this. So he just looks like he has a long set of hips. So again, remember that this telescoping piece has to be telescoped. And what you're going to want to do is, is basically bend it this way so that the, the hip, the thigh is going backwards like 90 degrees or more. And then it's going to come in like this. And you're going to push from the back to shove this all in. 
like so. And again, we're going to have to do some cleanup. You saw this came undone a little bit. But this is what it should look like. All right, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go a little bit faster this time. So we already untabbed the, the heel, uh, uh, the toe piece that locked into the heel. We're going to come here, move this to the side, unpeg the side panel of the leg. Simultaneously, we're going to untab this tab here and bring this down. Fold in this gap filler. And again, I just like to go ahead and go straight into rotating this around. I forget how I usually do it. Is it this way? Yeah. Rotate this around. From here, this wheel well piece is going to rock back and then sit flat like this. The wheel, again, is going to come up. around and then fold in on itself and you see that tab here now we can tab in this wheel well section so that all these nice stripes line up we're gonna again make sure that this is telescoped out rotate it 180 degrees telescope it closed and that will get you your your uh back rear, uh, rear section done, close up the toe, and then from here, we have to rotate down the bumper, which will give you just enough room to tab in this white piece here. Come on. There we go. And then we're going to close this up. What's going on here? What's going on with this toe? There we go. And then close up this heel onto the toe. Same thing with the knee. Remember to push it inwards. Telescope out at the knee here. You can see how it expands inward towards the body. Telescope that in. We're going to get the thigh as back as far as we can. And then bend at that weird joint. So it looks like this. And then we're going to push up from the bottom. All the way in. Oh, sorry, I forgot to pull back the spoiler. You can really do that at any point. It doesn't really matter. Why did this come undone again? But yeah, this, like I said, that's why it's kind of annoying. Hey, Xenomorph, thanks a lot for the $10. Wow, that's a lot. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions or comparisons. Same thing uh, with you, Memo. Thanks for the $1.99. Uh, let me know if you need to do any comparisons at the end. I will probably missed your comment, so... Uh, just save that towards the end, and I'll, I'll make sure to get to it. All right, so where were we? But uh, yeah, this, these pieces tend to come undone. We're going to do some cleanup later, but make sure we get all that done. And then those that's the lower section. We're going to go ahead and tab in the two halves. It has a series of tabs. We're just going to push it on. And hopefully get this seated correctly. But again, we're gonna we're gonna do some cleanup later. Uh, don't forget this section here. Um, so that back hip middle hip skirt section, you want to fold this down because you're gonna need that space there. So that's the bottom half. Let's go to the top. Uh, the first thing we want to do is actually reverse <coughs> this uh, this shoulder tab here. So we want to lift this back. Thanks, Princeton. I appreciate the two dollars. Uh, yeah, I actually feel great. Oh, thanks, Scott. Nine, nine, nine. Well, you guys are being super generous today. Thanks so much. Let me make sure to get you any kind of comparisons towards the end or any, answer any questions. Happy to do so. Um, so again, you want to unlock those uh, shoulder tabs that weren't tabbed in at the uh, out of the box, and then you want to rotate them back. Uh, depending on how your wings were situated, you want to get them out of the way. So let me... They, so they were like this, right? So you want to rotate it out. 
and then you want to rotate it up. Remember that it does need to be telescoped outwards before you can rotate the door. So just remember that there is a telescoping joint. This figure has several series of telescoping joints, which I really don't like as a design, but we won't go there for right now. So let's get back into the transformation. Next up, after we've undone both of the shoulders, we want to come to the chest area here, untab this, and then um, you've got to do kind of a weird sliding joint. So it's it's kind of hard to see. Let, let's do this first. So let's, I want to show you what it looks like. And it's easier to show you if I undo some of this. So lift up this little section here. You need to lift this up to release this backpack section. And uh, I want to get the arms out of the way, the shoulders out of the way. So this is what I want to show you. You see this uh, curved gap here and the pin joint? You need to, it will slide up on that. So you want to pull kind of forward and upwards to get this whole upper body rotating. Um, I do believe you need to uh, separate the chest though. So first of all, you want to split the chest in the middle and pull it out to the side. Come on. Like so. And this will then, then allow you to rotate on this sliding joint. So see how this one went all the way to the back now? That's how you want to do it. So you want to rotate that all the way to the back. Remember to have this split open. With the head, um, it's pretty easy. You want to lift up on the head so that the neck panel comes out. The base, this very base, is on a double hinge. You want to rock that pin joint back and then you want to face the face down. And you want to lift this front section up just a little bit. You need to open it up just so you can get access to some other tabs that will fit in and you're going to close that back up. I didn't understand why at first. You had to lift it up and then close it later. But you do need to lift it up to um, allow for some tabbing. All right. Uh, this back piece, this should have been up already. But if it wasn't um, from before, just go ahead and do that. And now we can rotate the center section. So rotate the center section with the head. You want to rotate this 180 degrees through the split chest. And then you can tab everything back in place here, like so. While we're here, we're going to fold in these two white pieces. You want to pull out on the gray section here. That will give you a little bit of extra room so that you can fold in the white piece. And then you can close up that piece again so it's flush. So it was open, folded in the white piece, and then close it back up. All right. Uh, we're going to deal with arms last. So the reason why we had to pull up this blue piece is because these hooky things on here are going to have to go underneath and sit underneath here. And then the blue piece will tab on there. So it, it's, it's kind of complex, but it's not really. All right, so down here, underneath the roof, we want to pull down because these are tabbed in or should be tabbed in if you're doing it correctly. There's a tab here. You're going to rotate it 180 to the back and then flip it 90 degrees to make kind of the rear uh, side mirror or side window. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, from here, you have another sliding joint on that's uh, holding this entire piece. You want to fold this as far forward as you can, and then we're going to slide it backwards, okay? So we're going to slide this back. It's going to ride up. That's why we needed to fold that um, rear hip skirt piece back. That's going to ride all the way up. We're going to get this underneath here. Tab these sections in. Again, we're going to do a lot of cleanup later, so don't worry about it being too clean. And then these two tabs will go underneath the rear windshield. Like so. These will tab in to both sides. Come on. There we go. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on the front here before we move on. So again, 
That's why we needed to move that blue piece up. You can see here that those white hooks now reside there. And you want to make sure that this that section is straight so that you don't have a gap on your hood. So make sure you do all that. Once it's kind of flushed out, you can come back here and close that blue flap and make sure that the head is positioned correctly. Now we're done with all the, basically most of the hard part. Lastly, the doors on the side, we're gonna flip out the side view mirror as well as the window. They just rotate around. Uh, reminder that we do need to telescope this pin joint, these doors. So again, this is the outward position where there's a gap here between the door and the, and the joint. You wanna close that for transformation. That tabs in. And then another thing they don't show really clearly is that the, this hinge here is actually on a double hinge joint. And to get this situated incorrectly, you need to push this pin joint in underneath this white piece here. So, and it does feel a little fragile, so just be careful. So you can see I'm pushing up and you can see the pin is now hidden. So there was a pin joint here that you, can, you cannot see now because it went up and behind this piece. You need to do that. That will give you the clearance to tab in everywhere. There's also a tab here on the door and a tab on the back. And again, we're gonna we're gonna be doing cleanup, so don't don't worry about it too much. But again, just remember, telescope that door closed and then push in on this hinge. Just be very careful so you don't break anything. Tab here, tab here. All right, I think we're mostly done here. Now we just deal with the arms. The arms are actually some of the interesting, easy parts. Um, you want to open it because it's an asymmetrical, asymmetrical transformation, but um, it's pretty much the same. So we're going to close up the fist like we did before. We're going to get this rotated all the way down to the front and then rotate it 180 degrees on this die cast piece. Um, this auto, I am honest, I accidentally did this already. So the shoulder joint is also on double hinges. This die cast piece, when it sits kind of flush with the top of the shoulder, that's for robot mode. You want to double hinge it upwards so that there's a gap here now. All right, and then we want to rotate this around, rotate the forearm inward so that the elbow joint is here for this arm. And then make sure that that shoulder locking mechanism that we rotated out is still rotated in. You need that space here. And then we're going to rotate this up. There's three tabs. There's uh, one here on the back of the wheel well, one here, and then one peg. So you have to kind of coordinate all three of those. Come on. So yeah, it's just kind of weird because you have an upwards tab, but then you also have one that's outwards here. So you kind of have to push it at a weird angle like this to get it up and then in. And then get this in. Oh, that went too far in. But just be careful so you don't break any of those small tabs. And then the arm will rotate in. There is a tab slot in the forearm here and a tab right next to the blue piece there. So you want to have the elbow at 90 degrees and then just really just finesse it a little bit. It will all work out and does clean up quite nicely. There we go. All right. Yeah. yeah. So it all cleans up quite nicely once you get it done. Uh, this piece is a little bit annoying just because it's a blind tab, but that's how it should look like so. And we're going to repeat on this side just the opposite, though. The opposite in being that the arm is going to come down. So, again, rotate this out. Rotate it 180 on this die cast piece here. Get the arms facing, bending in like this. Fold in the fist. And 
and then this is going to go down again three tabs one peg here tab and then tab back here there we go that one came it went in a lot easier and again we'll do some cleanup this has a tab here that goes into the top of the gray ad piece which again is kind of weird but it works i guess oh did i make sure uh make sure if i didn't um make sure to again push the shoulder up on that double hinge because you need that clearance to get it in here i think i did do that but maybe i just didn't mention it all right and that is him transformed i'm just going to look around to see where there's things that didn't tab in correctly like this thing didn't tab in here correctly or popped out the hood there this section here let's clean this up the doors are good the arms are good the rear section okay there we go it, it took a while and again it, it it's just a lot of finessing and being very specific in how you have to do it uh, but it does work and everything does hold together quite nicely uh, but whoever said it's a fast and easy uh, transformation, I think they're they're doing something different than me, clearly, because it's neither fast or easy, but it is on on par uh, a more enjoyable transformation than most trans, trans uh, fans toys figures. I will say that. But yeah, it's, the instructions because it, they're so so intricate in some of the ways and steps you have to do, it's just impossible to show on a um, on a paper instruction just watch a video or watch this one or watch tm reviews or any other really good reviewer who's good with transformations watch those and then you, sh you should be able to point out um some of the uh, again idiosyncrasies but he looks great right um here he well let's do a quick 360 he does look super nice very accurate love the white um paint I thought this was kind of interesting, but I realized that it's because this is a racing car and it needs, I think there's probably like vents here. Uh, and I did look it up. It is accurate to have this kind of detail here. And he looks fantastic. He feels good. Um, overall, you might, again, need to do a little bit of finagling here and there to get things not to gap up every once in a while. But overall, he, it, it transforms well, locks in. Um, I like the translucent blue. You can see him next to Streak here. Uh, take a look at TM Reviews. I'm sure he's going to do a comparison with Make Toys Downbeat, a detailed one. Obviously, I can't transform him live to do a side-by-side <coughs> -side comparison for you guys here, so I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, I think scale-wise, he looks really good. Um, Accessory-wise, you can bring his two guns. You can see there's a peg on one side here. You can go ahead and tab that in there. Same thing with the speakers. Um, they are not um, uh, exactly the same. They, so there are specific sides that you need to have um, these on. So you can tab these on as well to get a fully weaponed out jazz and alt mode. Looks pretty ridiculous to be, to be sure. But it's nice that they have it. Some people like doing stuff like that. Me, I'm not. I'm never going to display my figure all weaponed out like this. But it's nice that they accounted for it at least. Um, do I have any other alt mode comparisons? No, none that would be useful to anybody here. I don't think. <coughs> so let me see if I missed any alt mode um, or any questions on the transformation or anything else. Uh, TM says McLuthor G. No, it's the only. It's only one way. I don't know what that means, but okay. I don't think. I don't think I'm missing any. I don't think I'm missing any questions. But yeah, it, it looks. Hey, Polaris, how's it going? Yeah, it's very clean. I agree with Crimson Toys. Once you get it here, it's very clean, very satisfying. Looks beautiful. Just needs a Autobot symbol, which I will put on at some point. But yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy transformed back. I do want to end this before nine o'clock, so that those those of you who watch Figure Action podcast won't be late for that. <coughs> <coughs> 
No, you can't switch the arms. Yeah, the arms, uh, because of the way they tab. Um, I mean, I guess you could do it, but they don't tab incorrectly because there's a tab down here, and then there's a tab up here. So I guess theoretically, yes, you could, but uh, then you wouldn't be able to tab it in all correctly, and this would sit down a little bit more, and this would sit... Well, actually, this would sit fine, I think, but this arm wouldn't tab in, so it would sit down a little bit. Hey, Jermaine, I don't know if I said hi to you already. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy transformed back into robot mode. I'll uh, answer some of the questions and thank the, uh, the folks again who donated and see if they have any comparisons that they want to see uh, or any questions. And uh, yeah, so let's start get started. As always, what I like to do is just loosen up everything that really needs to be loosened so you just don't forget about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the arms out first just because it's easy to get those arms out. And then pull out at the wheel well here, like so. We'll just get these out of the way. Coming around. Come on. There we go. Like that. All right, we'll deal with the actual final arm transformation later. We, we'll just rotate them for now. And so that they're correctly positioned. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just flip up this blue flap here as well. Let's get the doors untabbed and out of the way. And remember that that double hinge needs to come back out. So you can see that pin joint here come, came out. So when you open the door. Oh, I should have shown that. Obviously, he can't open the door in alt mode. I didn't show that playability, but it was quite obvious from the transformation. So just get these out of the way. For now, um, coming to the front here, we want to loosen. The reason I pulled up that um, blue tab is because you want to get these hooks from the hood out because you're going to want to loosen this section up. Um, and the easiest way to get this these rear um, side mirrors out, I find, is to actually untab the whole side panel first. So untab this section here completely. That gives you a little bit more room because this tabs in downwards on here anyway and it's just very tight tolerances. So I like pulling out completely on that. That gives you a little bit of room to untab this because it's very hard to get this hood section out, uh, the, the roof section out because it's underneath. So oh, this does pop out on a ball joint. It's happened to me a couple of times. Not a big deal, but you shouldn't always have to do that. So this will come back, slide it forward on this joint, and now we can actually transform the rest of the upper body. So upper body, uh, let's start with the waist. Pull this down. Pull this out. Open these flaps. And then close up the gray waist again. Separate the hood section. Split it to the sides. And then we're going to rotate the whole neck and head panel this way, so towards the front. Rotate around, close this up. We'll extend the double hinge at the base here, tuck that one into the front side, and then lock the neck panel in place here. With that done, we can rotate again on that die, keist, die cast, not die keist, die cast pin that's on both sides that ride along this sorry, this curled rail here, or slot. So you want to rotate it all the way to the front, and that will make it so that his chest is um, facing the correct direction. And then we can collapse that in. Come on, pull it up. All right, well, we'll probably have to do some cleanup there in a bit. All right, um, this backpack, we're going to fold these in like that or downward like that and then rotate them. They're, they are all, they do have a peg hole and a peg, peg underneath the roof. Um, it's just not wholly necessary to get these tabbed in or pegged in, but 
that is the correct way. So I wanted to inform you guys of that. And then this, these hooks, make sure that this flap is up. This will go up and forward. And then you close this up, which will lock that backpack into place. The doors, just fold in the rear view mirror and the windows. <clears throat> you can either keep them out right now or you can telescope them so that the pin sits in inward like this and then you can rotate the rotate that down remember to do that otherwise you're going to damage your figure possibly break it so rotate that down and then these will fold in like this but just to show you more of the transformation we're going to keep that out for now um let's go ahead and finish up the upper body transformation we'll open up the forearms rotate out the fists Same thing on this side. And then we'll go ahead and um, get the shoulders locked in. But remember, we have to get these shoulder tabs, which are really frustrating to get to, out. Like that, so that they're kind of like a 45 degree angle. Then rotate the shoulder joint in. Don't forget to bring the double uh, hinge shoulder downward so it sits flush like that. Same thing on this side. We'll get the shoulder down and get this shoulder joint locked into place like so. And then finally, tab this part into the bumper. Oh, why does his shoulder joint come down? Okay, there we go. So there's his upper body, essentially, aside from the backpack, which I'm leaving open just so you can see, and there's a little bit more room for the legs to transform. <clears throat> All right, with the legs, um, I like to take them one at a time, so I like to split it, and then you're just going to pull down. You can pull down on this die cast piece, but just grab the main body and then pull down on the leg. Like so. Same thing on this side. Like so. While we're here, let's go ahead and lock the, the knees into place so things aren't flopping around. Again, just support it from the back and then push it forward. Or you can support it with your finger and push it from the back. Come on. There we go. Until it sits flush. While we're here, Let's go ahead and rotate the hip up. That tabs in right here. And then close up the rear hip skirts. Now we can go ahead and fold in the doors if that's the way you like to position them or keep them out, whatever you want. Fold in the backpack. So now the, the upper body is completely done. We're just working on the lower legs. <clears throat> Remember that this is a telescoping joint here on the, at the knee, so close that up. Now we're going to work on the spoiler double hinge that up towards the front of the car we're going to untab this section here and then untab the heel untab the side peg underneath the spoiler right there and we're going to rotate the bumper back like so now we can deal with all the inner stuff we're going to rotate the toe down. We're going to untab the side panel, rotate that around <coughs> the, the wheel well. At some point, really at any point, I like to have this extended when I do. Rotate this entire armature around 180. We're going to untab the sections of the front wheel well open that up we're going to rotate this wheel onto the other side so extend rotate through fold flat like this <laughs> and where is it and then when you rotate this wheel well 
And before you telescope it closed, remember that there is a peg here. So make sure that's aligned before you squish it slash telescope it closed. All right. Um, don't forget this inner gap filler here. It's hard to see, but it's on the inside of the shin. Rotate that out. Get this wheel well around the wheel here. And then we're going to rotate all these pieces in. There's a tab here on the translucent blue. There's a tab here on the knee. There's a tab here on um, the front. And there's a tab here that goes into the front of the shin. So make sure you get all those kind of aligned. So one, two, three, and then four on the front. I think those are all, all the ones there. And then finally, with that all done, fold the feel heel back closed down and then lock it into place with the toe connector so i know that was a lot um it, again it is more complex than i was expecting but it works oh sorry the knee came undone and we'll repeat it one more time we'll try to do it a little bit more quickly here so again um pulling this out to the side we're going to untab the spoiler, rock it forward, untab the heel, <clears throat> untab this peg, and then rotate this entire bumper back. Again, that's why you need to move the spoiler forward so that you have room for this bumper to uh, rotate backwards. Get this white piece kind of tucked underneath the spoiler. Pull out the toe. I like to extend this section first, and then we can rotate it around like so. Either way, like you do have some clearance issues, whichever way you rotate it. That's why I like to have it extended as opposed to closed because you get a little bit more um, wiggle room. Now with this section, again, telescope it open. It was closed like this in car mode. Telescope it open. Untab the wheel well section. Open that up. We're going to rotate this around 180. We're going to get the wheel up. Up. Come on. Up and around like so. This down. There's a small tab there. All right. And then the shin filler. Uh, where's my spudger? Get that gap filler open. With all that being done, now we can rotate this, this entire section back into the leg. Come on. What happened here? Oh, sorry. It didn't telescope close. That's why. I thought I did that. All right. What's going on? Toes open, yeah, okay. All right, there we go. And again, the series of tabs, tabs, actually there's another one on the shin filler. So just close up this section here and these tabs on the side. Rotate this section down, bring the heel down, and then get this toe connector connected to the heel. And with all that, the shoulder rock back up, get that shoulder back, back down. With that, we have Jive back in robot mode. So again, I don't know who's saying that he's a fast and easy transformation. He is not. I, I, I just don't see how anybody could say that. Uh, he is very annoying in a lot of places just because of how specific you need to be. Um, but overall, I don't think it's a terrible transformation. You just have to be patient with it and everything does end up locking into place. And honestly, I think this is one of the situations where I think the, the juice is worth the squeeze. Um, he looks fantastic in both modes. Um, no real major complaints. Quality overall feels great. 
Um, yeah, there's not a lot to complain about aside from those those frustrating areas of transformation with the upper part and the lower part. Um, but if you're if you're okay with that, then I think you'll be very happy overall with um, Jive as a replacement. I do think he is a worthy upgrade to um, to Downbeat. So if you guys remember my Phantasm slash Mirage review, I, I said that if you already have Transform Element um, Mirage, I don't know that it's a worth, worthwhile update to go to Fans Toys uh, Mirage. But I do think that this Jive is a worthwhile update to uh, make, make Toys Downbeat. So yeah. All right, so that's it for the review. Let me just get a couple of figures out here as I answer some questions. I owe a few of you some comparisons. So let's see. Uh, I think we had uh, Princeton. We had Xenomorph. We had Memo. Who else did we have? Let me, uh, let me get to my computer real quick so I can see them all. <clears throat> I know we had at least one more. Was it Jermaine? I don't, I don't know how they... I don't know how to view I don't know how to view uh the donations who else who else was it can somebody tell me who else was was it Jermaine uh all right well let's do some comparison so memo you want to see him next to this? oh my gosh I hate you all right but you donated, so Memo Dippany had it, Princeton had it, um, Xenomorph had it, I know that. <clears throat> oh, I can't believe I'm doing a studio cell comparison for this guy. But you paid for it, you got it. So there you go. All right, uh, Princeton. What did you have any any uh, any desires questions? Xenomorph. Did you have any com questions or uh, comparisons that you like to see? There's got to be somebody. I know that there was another person. Who who else did I miss? I know I thanked them before, but I just don't remember who the last person was. That donated two dollars. Uh, I don't have Agent Meister Xenomorph. This is the only other uh, jazz that I have in my collection. Of unfortunately, uh, do you want to see him next to uh, uh, Phantasm? Maybe. Why do people keep saying Skywarp? Oh, Scott, was it you, Scott? If it was you, Scott, uh, what, do, what do you want to, uh, what do you want to see? Oh, Scott Gomez was the 999. Yeah, do you have any questions or do you have a figure you would like to see compared with um, Jive? <coughs> Sorry, taking a drink here so I don't sound completely. Oh. So Scott, Scott, did you have a comparison comparison you wanted to see? I, I can do. What Skywarp do I have? I do have a masterpiece one, but uh, here. Here's I don't uh I don't I don't have Skywarps easily accessible, but hopefully this is. Hopefully this is close enough. I have two, I have two uh, seekers. So this is deformation space and this is the new seeker mold. Hopefully that's close enough. You want him throwing him? I don't even remember that. All right, is that, is that good? Just imagine him black. I don't even remember him throwing him, so I don't even know if this is the p position.
All right, what about you, Princeton? I think Princeton or uh, Xenomorph, did you guys talk? No, I think I already got, I, I think I got, maybe Princeton's the only one that didn't request anything yet. I'm so bad at keeping track. I, that's why I need TM. Oh, and I'm already over time. So I'm five minutes over. I do want to get, um, I do want to, yeah, Studio Cell is just a little bit taller. Uh, I do want to get uh, this wrapped up just so I can get you guys over to um, to Figure Action Podcast. I'm going to head over there as well. So hopefully answer your questions. Uh, if this review helped you out in any way, either in a decision or to help you with transformation, because it was pretty complex, um, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. It also helps me be motivated more than anything. If you're here and you haven't subscribed yet, I'd, uh, I'd uh, love for you to be a, a subscriber. Um, Reminder that I will be back probably tomorrow, honestly, to do the um, Ocular Max Tempo, their retail release, not the TFCon exclusive. So I'll just be doing a comparison of how he looks um, in terms of colors because that's the only thing that's different as well as the packaging. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. And then once my voice is fully back, uh, I'll be doing my 8,000 sub giveaway. Um, I'm, I kind of mentioned it last night at TM Reviews. Um, live stream that we did with him yesterday but we'll be doing i'll be doing a giveaway and depending on how many people um enter the giveaway i'll be giving away multiple prizes and i'll also let the winners choose so this is going to be one of the prizes uh another prize is oh hold on one second uh another prize is going to be this uh, Jurassic Park crossover, Tyrannocon Rex and Autobot JP93. So that will be another option. And uh, I'll have a third option as well for, um, for a prize that I'm not mentioning just yet. But again, it will really depend on when, um, uh, how, many, how many folks enter. So if, if less than 100 folks enter the, comp uh, the, the contest, um, only one winner will be drawn, but over a hundred, I'll probably give out two and maybe over 300 or over 400, I'll give out three prizes. So keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, the poll did end. Uh, we had, the question was, do you prefer jazz with or without doors, door wings in robot mode? Uh, 61% said without wings cause he's a car and 38%, I, that math doesn't even work out. Uh, 38% said with wings, he drinks, he drinks Red Bulls. So, uh, most of you guys are preferring his cartoon accurate look, but again, luckily you have options with Jive. Uh, like I said, I do rec recommend him as a figure. If you haven't been able to get him <coughs> <coughs> or you can't find him right now, uh, Toy Doja did say that they should have uh, some more coming up on their site, uh, Saturday. So if not earlier, so keep keep up to date with with that. Um, there should be a link in the description to Toy Dojo. Um, if you're catching this on the rewind and I missed any questions that you might have, uh, please feel free to ask those, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, I appreciate everyone for joining, spending the last hour with me, um, and and bearing with me with my crazy voice going on right now. I uh, appreciate you all. Hope you guys have a happy holidays, and uh, we'll be back probably tomorrow. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good one.